below year sevens and God bless you. Guys, I hope that you are keeping well. Let's get straight into it, hey? I have a question for you. And my question is this. What does going for a surf have to do with, say, magnets? And what does magnetism and going for a surf have in common with this contraption here? I'll show you it more closely. Inside, there is a spring, and when I pull upon this spring, it stretches out. Likewise, when I release, the spring compresses. Do you see a letter there? Remember that letter, we're gonna come back to it. And what does that device have to do with the way that this contraption falls? So, let me show you what I mean. Okay, ready? Set. Go. Nice. Do you see at the end of the free fall there? It began to rotate. So my first question is why did this fall downwards in the first place? And why did it simply not just drop like a stone? What was acting against that free fall motion to cause it to slowly spin? And lastly, what does all that have in common with this balloon-powered hovercraft? They are super easy to make, and if you watch the end of this video, I'll show you how to... Here we go. So, balloon-powered hovercraft, what does that have to do with all of these things? Have a think about it. Well, the answer is this. They are all examples of forces. And forces is the topic of work for this term. The surfboard, the magnets, the springs, even coming into the classroom. If I had to open that door handle, I would have to twist it. There's an example of a force. It can be a twist force. I would then either have to push, there's another example of a force, can be twist, can be push, or pull the door, depending if I wanted to get in or out. So a force can be a twist motion, it can be a pull motion, or a push motion. Let's look at a definition of what a force actually is. So a force is an interaction between two objects. So, my hand and the door handle, for example. But there's that letter again, the uppercase N. What does that mean? Why did we see it on here? I'll give you a clue. We measure weight in kilograms. We measure distance in meters or centimeters. Well, we measure forces using Newtons, named after Sir Isaac Newton, of course, the great scientist. So, point one, point two, gonna give you another point now, and it is this. Whenever there is a force acting upon something, there is a force acting against that force. Let me give you an example. If you've ever shot a gun before, there is a massive force that happens in the gun that propels the bullet forward, right? But maybe you've seen the movies. What happens is that recoil. So that bullet actually like pushes back on the gun and pushes back on the head. What about if I were to kick a soccer ball? If I kick that ball, it would go flying forward, right? But there's also a smaller force that works against my foot and it's that impact of the ball pushing against my foot. So forces always act in pairs. The example of this little helicopter, what was the force that was calling it to fall to the ground? Uh, why are we not floating up into space right now? It's because the force of gravity is acting upon 
me and upon you and upon this helicopter, right? But what was the force that was acting against gravity, causing it to slowly fall and even rotate? I think, what do you reckon? Did anyone come up with air resistance? Yeah, or even friction? So can everyone put their hands together? And then rub really hard. What do you start to feel? You start to feel heat, hey. And heat is an indication of friction. And friction is an example of a force working in the opposite direction. So one hand's going this way, one hand's going this way, and then we get heat, we get friction. If we are looking at a vehicle, let's, let's think of, about a van, for example. If a van is going forward, then what's pulling it backwards? Again, it would be friction, like those wheels are rubbing against the road and the road is slowing that vehicle down. I'm gonna show you two other forces right now. So, if we're thinking about that van and how it can either accelerate or decelerate, we can draw a diagram to represent that. And this is called a force diagram. In a force diagram, you will see an object with arrows coming off it. Those arrows represent two things. It represents the direction of the force, the arrow, the force is the arrow, and it also represents the size of the force. So the longer the arrow, it means the bigger the force. Likewise, the smaller the arrow, the smaller the force. So my question is this, why are there forces going upwards and downwards? What's the force pulling the van down? We've already spoken about that. It is, of course, gravity. But what is the force that is working against gravity? It's the same force acting upon me right now as I sit, acting upon you as you sit and watch this. The force of the chair pushing upwards against my body, the force of your chair pushing upwards against you, the force pushing of the road and pushing up against the van, the van structure itself pushing and holding it upright. It's just called the upward force. So we have a small force going up, a small force going down, but this force diagram is actually unfinished and it has something to do with acceleration. So, for something to be accelerating, it means it's increasing in speed, hey. So if this van is going forward and it's accelerating, it means it's getting faster. But we don't have a force, an arrow representing that. And we know that forces always work in pairs. So what would be the force working against the forward direction of that accelerating van? It would be friction again, hey. That could be like air resistant friction against the air that it's pushing through. It could be friction with those ties on the road eventually slowing it down. But we need to draw that. So my question is, if we have a force diagram showing a van accelerating, is the arrow going in this direction gonna be the same size as the arrow going in this direction? Well, if it's accelerating, it means that the force going this way is actually going to be bigger than the force going this way. But if the force going backwards was bigger than the force going forwards, it would actually begin to slow down until a point where it had stopped moving. So if the van had stopped moving altogether, we would probably see equal sized arrows. It's neither accelerating or decelerating. These are examples of what is called an un, unbalanced force diagram because this arrow is bigger than that one. It's unbalanced, they're not even. If I were to draw an example of a balanced diagram, so say picture of Mr. Callan sitting in his chair, well, we know that there's a force of gravity pulling down his right. We also know there's always an upward force, the force of the chair pushing upward. 
but I'm neither accelerating nor <laughs> decelerating. In fact, those arrows are very large. I'm not really going anywhere. So we could have a balance diagram by saying these are equal and these are equal. So that is an example of a balanced force diagram. And that is all for today's lesson. I hope that you're excited to get into a topic. There is an awesome assignment that you get to do at home. You get to build something kind of similar to the balloon powered hovercraft. And if you want to make one of those, check out the end of this video. Guys, God bless you. I'll see you around.